that was a different story for sure. Um, you know how I've told you that I was previously in a gang, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, that day we had a uh, known that there was going to be a large transport of buns and such uh, that was moving along a wagon convoy the deputies were guarding it we sat up in a fishing town waiting for them to cross a certain bridge and intended to wait there for them to arrive but um the taps that we were seeing posted out about their location. Uh, well, they should have been there by then. So we went back along the tracks to another uh, telegram station and we found a group of people and they said, Oh, I, another group. They uh, already hit, they already hit the, the convoy and they took everything and they rode off and I had previously run into these people before. They were a bunch of creepy cultist types wearing masks and dressed in dark clothing. And uh, I said, well, last time I saw them, they were up in the snow. And we went riding up there looking for them. We found them at a settlement up there. And as we rode in, the gang leader faced them off. And... Uh, they started screaming at each other back and forth, and before I knew it, I was shot down, laying under my horse. Took a shot right to the collarbone. Broke it. It's a lot of pain those days. That was at the point where they wouldn't give me any laudanum or anything like that to stave off the pain, so I just had to tough it out with willow bark, which, I'll be honest, does pretty much nothing for anything for me. Unfortunately. Hey, uh, willow bark? Aye, aye. It's like, it's like those, um, you know, white willow bark tablets and stuff. This place they just like to make you drink the tea. It's a bitter tea. Oh. Sometimes they say it's sort of like a, a new thing called aspirin. Either way, it doesn't do too much for me, unfortunately. The only reason I take it from the, the medics is so that they don't question me about anything else. Question you? Well, I mean, if Willow Bark doesn't do the job, then I'll be like, all right, well, time for the next whatever's on the list. No, they gave me morphine last night, but as I've said, I've, I've used to have a problem with laudanum, which is very similar. It's also opium. No, I've... Every time I, I'm given morphine, I've got splitting headaches after. That's terrible. I can't even cope in the moment, you know. Hmm. No, I've, uh, no, I've seen the worst that it has to offer. I'm sorry, say that again? I've seen the worst that it has to offer. Work morphine and morphine. such. Not on myself personally. No, I and uh, when uh, the old state that I was in, uh, I take a, a few kicks from horses and fall. I actually got lassoed off a horse robbing a store. A lot of pain. Also had a cough. That I couldn't get rid of. And a doctor prescribed me some of the um, laudanum. And so I took it as directed. But uh, as time went on, what I was taking wasn't really effective anymore. 
And so I took a wee bit more. Took it as needed. No one ever explained to me how the attraction to it works. Um, in fact, I started trying to stop taking it because it, <laughs> it was expensive. I didn't have a certain money. But my cough would come back. I'd feel terrible and I'd just conclude that I was still sick and I still needed it. And when I told that to the doctor, just when I asked for more, they screamed at me and called me an idiot. Told me that I was stupid, filthy, worthless. That I just wanted it. Never told me why I was experiencing that. Never told me anything about that. Just screamed at me and called me stupid. There I was, running with a gang who practically had me captive and addicted to this laudanum and I was just, you know, the worst sort of human being that anyone could think of, I guess so. I thought you've overcome that. Aye, I, I, I mean, I don't need it. I wean myself off of it. Well, I mean, I had help. I had a... a friend hold on to the dosages and he gave them to me as I needed them so that I could come off of it slowly. I'm glad you were able to. Why? It was not a nice thing. It was not a nice thing. I didn't, you know, do it to to lose my mind in something or to, you know, feel a certain way. I, I, I did it not to feel pain and not to feel. But those days, I was trying not to feel a lot of things. So. It sort of makes sense. I had to forget what they did to me every single day so that I could continue to exist and survive in the reality that I was living in. Now look at you. The sad thing is this is where I would want to be before they did what they did to me. But they put a hard stop on that. It's about the journey. The lessons you learn along the way. I guess. I mean, I think Michael probably put it pretty good the other day when we had our chat. He asked me if I would want to be the person that I was six years ago, before all this happened. And I guess I wouldn't. But it's not like I went to experience that hell on earth again. But I wouldn't be who I am today if I hadn't. My convictions wouldn't be as strong, you know. I wouldn't have the experience that I do. I wouldn't be able to relate to people the way that I can. I know I'm probably going to be terrible when it comes to quoting or paraphrasing the, the Bible, but isn't there a story about Jesus going on a walk for 40 days or such? Facing all his demons? No, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. No. He was being tested. I don't put myself on his level, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> I had temptations and I succumbed to them. But you overcame those demons. Eventually. After I hit rock bottom. After I 
lost pretty much everything. Did, you, did I tell you that I went straight to call a duel? <sighs> it was with my old gang leader. You see, after I... We did a big job and I, I really didn't want to do it. They <sighs> sort of forced me into it. They uh, took the hostages and traded it for a, a deputy. Tr traded them for a deputy and when all was said and done, they wouldn't let him go. We took him off to some caves and they started torturing him. And I was afraid that they were going to kill him. And everything they were doing made it impossible to forget what they had done to me. Every time they blasted the shotguns off next to his head. It brought those memories back and I realised that I couldn't stand by silently and allow things to happen. And I ran out the... the cave. And in the dark, felt my way out and ran to the nearest telegram station where the law and let them know where they had him. And I guess the first thing those deputies did when they walked in there was to, you know, in response to, how did you find us? How do you know that we're here? They say, oh, you've got a wee birdie. We told you about the wee birdie. She sings every time she's in the cell. She told us everything. And that was from the people who I trusted to be my saviors. Who I'd hoped held on to as a last hope, a last lifeline. And they just threw me under the cart. Smug. It didn't occur to me that I'd never really been one of the gang that they hated before. That was just there because I didn't have any other choice. And that I was too weak to pull away from it because I was too afraid of losing my own life, of being subjected to more pain. Of course. You know, a gang doesn't take things like that lately. The state was very corrupt. One of the gang leaders was sleeping with the deputy marshal. And they wouldn't stop coming for me. They wouldn't stop coming for me. And I just wanted to be over with. And so I telegrammed out. I said that I would take a duel to end it. But they made it very clear that they held no sense of honour of any kind. I was informed that should I win the duel, the rest of the gang would gun me down where I stood. And they didn't exactly want to duel it. Because they felt like killing me on the spot would be too easy for what I'd done. So I uh, called the duel, but it was because I felt like I had no choice. <sighs> Somehow from that point I, I survived the kidnapped me and they threw a rope around my neck and had me sit on a horse and threatened me in every terrible way that you can imagine. Things they said I daren't even repeat. Essentially put an order over me that if I see any of the gang members in a town I was to leave that town immediately or face punishment for it. I laid low for over a month 
cut my hands out of their business. Try to interact with other people. And then they tracked me down and beat me over the head because I was apparently in town when some of them were. But you see, this game was so large. I knew about eight members. <laughs> Out of 20. So I didn't even know when I was in town with one of them. Either way, that place was so bad that I had to leave. I had to get out of the state. There was nothing for me. I tried to... <sighs> tried to become a deputy and I went to every single sheriff and... I got my, my criminal record cleared and they looked at me and they said that it doesn't even matter that your, your record's cleared. We still remember what you've done. That's what what I've done. Not a single one of them could tell me because there wasn't anything I'd done. I was just associated because I was with this game. I worked hard. Chopping wood, gaining strength. I spoke to every single person that I could. And their own command. Their marshals, their sheriffs, their under sheriffs. <laughs> and the end, it didn't matter. Cause uh, that deputy marshal that was sleeping with the gang member as well, she was still in control, so I wasn't gonna get anywhere. Last thing I wanted to do was run away again, but there I did. I left. And I wandered around for about five years doing odd jobs before I landed myself here. If only you found yourself in Patterson. Hmm. Sorry, say that again. I, uh, I said, if only you found yourself in Patterson. Patterson? New Jersey. Why is that? The department there had been, well, pretty much purged of anyone corrupt. Mm. The last 45 years. Well, that would certainly be nice, but I'll be very honest, I probably would have never considered going to New Jersey. It was far too close to New York. That's where <laughs> I came into the country. I'd be afraid I'd get snatched and dragged back to where I started. There's someone out there who thinks that I owe them. I see when I wanted to come here, I, I didn't have any money to do so, so I hooked up with an outfit that would pay my fare across the Atlantic. In exchange for me working at a contract in New York. Just doing cleaning, laundry, stuff like that, but... <laughs> every supply I needed I had to buy from the company store and it always outpaced my wages. It became very clear that the intention was never that I could actually work to be free from the contract because the debt would keep on piling up. So I jumped on the train and headed out west. Well, my department took that kind of stuff very seriously. The corruption. Well, more so businesses that preyed upon bringing people on from overseas or hell, even people born and raised here. Well, I was probably a perfect target. I had no family and left. My fiancé had died. I was grieving. And I just wanted to run away from the pain, thinking that a change of scenery would fix things. Of course, that's not exactly how it works out, is it? And I got myself in trouble, because... <laughs> the easiest thing to do with pain is pretend it doesn't exist, to just force yourself not to feel it, and then you don't feel anything at all, right? Yeah, in fact, the only thing that I could feel, the only time I ever could feel anything was when I was in danger. My blood was pumping. I 
So I took risks that I shouldn't have. I feel like you're preaching to the choir on that one. Oh, I am still in that place. To a degree, it's something I fight. I'm a lot better now, though. But, uh, as a deputy, those opportunities are sitting in my lap. I don't have to look for them. Can I ask you a question? I mean, of course you can. And have your brutally honest opinion. Brutally honest? <sighs> um, I'm not sure how to necessarily word it, but I'm just going to try. When you see me getting injured, I'm shrugging off pain, <laughs> saying I'm fine. All of that. What does that make you think? I mean, it sounds like something's very wrong with you. <laughs> that makes me concerned. Because I'll be very honest, Rip, I've had severe injuries that I didn't notice are an injury or a problem until I'm nearly passing out from blood loss. So that's certainly a concern. But... At the same time, uh, <laughs> I'll get angry at people if they just sit there and say they're fine when they're they're really not. I think people think that it's noble or heroic sometimes, and really it's just frustrating for the people that care about them. You know, <laughs> I've been guilty of doing the same. However. The doctors are aware of my my pain tolerance. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you mean by that, right? As, wait, did I say something wrong? No, no. I'm just uh, putting myself back. Bringing back memories, you know. became a detective back home. I was fodder. Initially. They didn't care about you? They sent me on operations that were like lambs to the slaughter. By dumb luck, we came out of it. Not without our scars. I know you mentioned the, um, 
the milk truck hiding there for an entire day. Eh? <laughs> Sometimes you get the uh, the funny stories. The ones you can look back and laugh at. They can't have the good without the bad, right? I mean, I suppose. Unfortunately... The reason I can suffer so much pain... It's because I can't feel it. It's because five years ago... I was taken, not ho not a hostage, it was a plaything. a toy for them to pick apart and put together. Vile and sick. Organized crime family. They were so involved. They had banks under their control. They had governors. On their beck and call. I was held captive for six months. I'm sorry. I'm tortured. For so long I couldn't even count the hours. I'm sure you've heard the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? I've heard it, but considering that I've been tortured too, certainly not as extensively as you might have thought. I don't feel view it that way. It certainly didn't make me stronger. Right, this isn't something that we need to discuss for evidence. I know to a degree how it is. It's painful to bring it up and it's worse to try and remember it. The, the, the terror of the helplessness does not leave. used it. As a lesson. I learned to control my pain. Endure it. I have to be strong for my my brothers and my 
the sacrifices we make her. I know it upsets people. And seeing me get injured and... I'm trying with all my heart to walk it off. No, well, because you certainly shouldn't be doing that. Because that's how you get hurt more. And I think that's the main issue, if anything. People here care about you, right? They just don't want to see you get harmed, come to harm. Just because you can push through something doesn't mean that you necessarily should. You guys. There were some dogs in town barking. Did you hear what that said? <laughs> What do you think the dog said? Uh, they probably said, there is, they're probably saying there is a rat and he's run underneath the garbage cans or the gutter where I can't get to him and they're screaming at him for it. <laughs> they, you know, they're very rude, as, as well as. I'm just waiting for the horde of dogs to start running over. A horde of dogs? No, you know, there's like 10 plus dogs here in Blackwater. Oh yeah, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Cinder, come here. Come here, baby. What's your problem? What's your problem, baby? You did your nice pony. I'm gonna get you a pony friend. I am. <laughs> I'm trying. You're, you're trying? To do better. I don't think that you're not doing well, Rep. Unless you're talking about... <sighs> Actually, the person you should be talking to about this sort of, sort of stuff is Michael. He knows a lot about it. Have you ever spoken to Michael? Got his telegram and I've had brief interactions with him, just scheduling. No. I mean, I'm, I'm not Michael, but I'd say it's probably could be good for you to learn when it's okay to let your guard down when you're in safe hands. Probably be a lot less stress on you. Because I... I mean, at least I, I know how scary it can be that someone might see through the facade. There's always a face that we're trying to put forward to everyone else. And that can come in lots of different forms. And we do that to protect ourselves. Even if it's from stuff that happened a long time ago. I just find every time I take off the badge, I get hurt. I feel like every time I take off the badge, I get kidnapped or something, but I think that's how the last few weeks have been. Well, hopefully that changes for you. I certainly hope so. It's just so frustrating when things are out of your control, you know? So I try very, very, very hard to be in control all the time. All the time. Well, that's, that's one of the many reasons that I don't drink. I don't want to put myself at risk. Hampered my own senses. And I certainly don't need another temptation in life. But 
far too many of those. May sound like an off topic question, but you ever had a tower reader? Uh, no, I, I don't uh, mess with that sort of stuff. It's pretty much witchcraft, in my opinion. Yeah. Not something I put any stock in, but nothing I'm going to entertain either. Personal beliefs and all that. No, that's understandable. I was told I needed to find a balance. Between work and night. The head and the heart. I'm sure, this was some of the stuff that Hominbird was talking about. Could possibly be uh, interpretive like that. I think Bird recommended I did a uh, spirit walk. I see. I'll admit I don't know where to begin on <laughs> anything like that. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I've heard similar things. Before I got mixed in the gangs, I ran with him. Well, someone who later became a Comanche chief, but at the time he was just running around in full of heat, but we struck up a strange friendship. He took me up on a mountain talking and then he gave me some powder. <laughs> I want to take it again. Turn my stomach and turn the sky a very shade you can imagine. <laughs> I'm a moon into a Leaving black hole. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he seemed to think it was great. I, I wasn't so certain about it. Yeah, I've met many a native who, uh... Well, they partake in smoking the dung of a bison. Really? Huh. They smoke it like a pipe. Aye, uh, this wasn't that. It was something, uh, POE or something like that. Mm. <sighs> I'm sorry for bringing up a pretty... ...depressing topic. I mean, I'm pretty sure I did the same with you. That's fine. Probably better that people talk about these things when it comes to mind rather than uh, continuing to bottle it away. I can only hope it gives a bit more insight. I know I'm a rather. private individual. Nothing wrong with that. I tend to be the same way. High outer walls. You can't let people get close enough to harm you. No, I did that too much recently. Don't want to make the same mistake. That's probably the one thing I'm terrified of. What's that? Opening up completely.
wanted to. That fear just keeps coming back. The fear of opening up Pandora's box. I mean, I can't even blame you for that. You don't want to tell me things, right? You don't have to. We're co workers, no one's owed access to, you know, <laughs> those dark things that you worry about. Sometimes it's good to share so that other people can understand where they're coming from, but no one's owed it. Smile's a good sign, but I was wondering what you were smiling at. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. That's all. Well, that's good. It's better than being unappreciated. <laughs> I do think the dogs are coming, though. Look behind you, there's, there's at least three or four down by my house. <laughs> They're making their way. <laughs> they are coming. I'm not sure how you're going to end up getting to sleep. I'm going to have them all barking on your porch. They don't bark on my porch. They're quiet. Those dogs over there? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I've only got the two that live where I do. The two big old bloodhounds. They're pretty quiet. I'm watching over for you. I nothing like a dog to stand guard. Surprised they didn't run Boyd off when he was lingering on that porch. Maybe I shouldn't trust the dog so much. You believe that a uh, a dog being man's best friend is a good indicator if they trust someone? I can certainly tell you that I've I've got a dog and they don't trust you when they trust everyone else. I'm not going to trust you very far. <laughs> I think sometimes they know things that we don't. They can smell bad intentions. Or crooked dispositions. I'm glad we're on the same page on that one. Hopefully we'll be back on duty tomorrow. That's the plan anyway. It was like forever since I was last on duty. Even though I was earlier. Why? You were on duty when Thorin. Unfortunately, I don't think I was on the uh, small clipboard. Well, I mean, that was me when I got taken by the, the wallaby, whatever. I wasn't even anything I had any signed in. I was trying to figure out whether or not I went to work. I went to go check my telegram, see if I had any, and every single person in the telegram station pulled their gun on me. Do you need to go check your telegrams now? Oh, that would be particularly. I should probably reply to yours at some time, so don't leave you hanging. But <laughs> not really expecting anything at the moment. 
I do probably need to start getting up to bed at some point though. Yeah. How dare you leave me hanging. Listen, I'd only been up for a few minutes when you walked through that door. <laughs> I'm just pulling, pulling your leg. Oh, same, I don't like to be the person who reads a telegram and doesn't ever respond to it, you know? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Well, I'm not making any accusations your direction. No, I'm, I'm throwing myself under the wagon on that one. <laughs> well, that's why I chewed you out for not leaving your telegram number, because I've got to go look it up every time I want you to respond to your telegram, but if I've got to look it up, then... <laughs> I get annoyed and then I don't respond to someone's telegram. You telling me you don't remember my telegram off by heart? Uh, no, I, I don't remember. It's it's ZC seven seven one six. What what? That's yours. Okay, okay so you know mine. Thank you. I'm sorry I don't have yours <laughs> memorized. <laughs> wow, Saffron, you're a tel terrible friend. You didn't even remember his telegram no. number. <laughs> I know. Keep that in mind. <laughs> wow. What? Nothing. I'm just laughing. I'm an idiot, I know. Why are you saying that? Uh, self deprecating humor. Gotcha. It's like whenever I remind people of when Cusco kicks me or I whack my face off of a branch as we're barreling Mine. through the water. You said you're deliberately providing comic relief. <laughs> Keeping people laughing. No. I should definitely try not to whack your your face on branches though. It's a it's an unpleasant experience. <laughs> I don't look that terrible, do I? What? <laughs> I just said I don't look that terrible, do I? What, from all the branches whacking your face? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you look bloody awful, Rip. <laughs> I'm, that was so mean, I'm sorry. I, just, I saw it. <laughs> I can't even mean. I hate it. I'm terrible, I'm sorry. Uh, nothing for you to be sorry for. <laughs> oh, God knows I'm surprised I don't look even more messed up. With everyone who's put me on the list, I'm surprised that there's nothing I'm dealing with either. Especially after the uh, little trip down the mountain the other day. But yours with Thorn? Up in the uh, up in the Grizzlies. <laughs> I I'm I'm so glad that circumstance intervened. Cause that would have been a, a terrible oh. <sighs> I'm more glad you didn't trip down either. Well I I cause we'd have never been found. Ever. I'm pretty sure that branch swiped us both off. And by the time I stood up, I had no idea where you'd gone. I just heard you calling from the distance. Well, I'm glad you heard me. I'm really glad I heard you too. Although I, wait, I wouldn't have stopped scouring the area for a while. That's, that's for certain. I would have gone and got people and had a big huge search party through the entire area that's for certain stupid cougars was there even a cougar there there must have been i didn't see it but the way the horses act and they don't act that way when it's not cougars hmm. and he was looking at something far in those bushes horses are very good uh, at finding cougars he managed to buck you off in time. Well, he threw. We got we got hit up by that branch. Otherwise, we would have been on his back. I see what I've done. I uh, take an Arabian into cougar country. They will know when there's a cat around. 
and their ears will twitch towards it, and then they'll, they're, they'll run in the opposite direction of the cat. Uh, as long as you don't try and force them to stop, and you just let them go, let them run where they will, you'll be fine. They'll stop and they'll try and book you off, but if you jump off before then, you're far away from that cat, you can turn around and get a beer on it and start firing. You know? Hmm. That's actually pretty effective, because they get far away from those cats. They do very well. This person must be grabbing cards off of porches or something. No, these, Watch, uh, they're gonna go up to my hut. Maybe not. Howdy. Huh. Look at all these dogs. There's five now. Yeah, which one you're gonna pet first? I guess whoever's not pooping. I can pet the good one. This good boy right here. There we go. Hi. That's a good puppy. So many of them though. Oh, you've done it now. <laughs> They're multiple. You pat one of them and they all come over. They all want fuss and attention. All you need to shh. Shh. Alright, but I'm gonna I'm gonna call it an eight. I appreciate you. I think it's good to get to talk outside of work. Thanks for bringing us out of the sheriff's office. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you doing? Oh, you're off duty or you're having a conversation in the office. That's so very off duty. <laughs> I'm sorry if the, uh, the topic of conversation wasn't the most liveliest, but... That's fine. I'm not bothered when people need to talk about things. I figured it. May just give a better idea as to who I am. My, it does. Not sure if mine does for me, but... I can see you've had a long journey. That's one way to put it, mate. But for now, you get some some rest. I will do. Take care. 